بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah's peace and blessing be upon each and every one of you We are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and grateful to Him Almighty that He has blessed us to continue discussing verses of the Holy Quran and learning from this holy book and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt uh, Within the previous episode, we reached to the point of being grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We got to the second verse of Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Fatiha, which was Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And we discussed how important it is for us to be grateful and we will continue discussing that. And one of the narrations that we read uh, within uh, this verse and understanding this verse and bringing it to our lives was from Imam Radha alayhi salam where he states, مَن لَمْ يَشْكُرِ الْمُنْعِمَ مِنَ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ If we are not thankful, if we are not grateful to people, to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whatever that they do for us, we have not been thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is very, very important. Uh, we left off with this narration. And inshallah, we're going to a little bit more elaborate on this point and this concept of being grateful and thankful to other. And it is very important to keep this in mind. Uh, we see another narration also from Imam Radha alayhi salam within the book that we have uh, uh, gave, uh, given as an action plan, which was the uh, book Tuhaf al Aqul. Inshallah, we have downloaded it and you have next to, your, uh, next to you and you have it with you. If it's on your iPhone, inshallah, you're reading. One hadith a day, one narration of a day uh, from Ahlul Bayt salam, and also bringing those narrations into your lives. Where Imam al Radha salam, states that the person's intellect won't be complete until he has 10 characteristics. It's an amazing hadith, it's a beautiful narration, uh, but we're taking one segment of it, one of those characteristics, we're discussing it, and inshallah, you can refer to. Uh, the book Tuhaf al-Aqul and get to the section which has uh, the narrations of Imam al-Radha alayhi salam inshallah you will find this narration Imam al-Radha alayhi salam says لا يتم عقل امرئ مسلم حتى تكون فيه عشر خصال an individual's intellect won't be completed until he has ten characteristics he mentions a couple of them one of them is يَسْتَكْثِرُ قَلِيلَ الْخَيْرِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ Any small thing that someone does for him, he sees it as very, very big. He would really, really appreciate it. He will be grateful, to be it very, very small. Maybe somebody gave, he was about to write something, he gave him a pen. He said, okay, this pen for you. Small pen. And so somebody gave him a cup of water. Very small. يَسْتَكْثِرُ قَلِيلَ الْخَيْرِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ when somebody does something small for him, he will go everywhere. Oh, have you seen this brother? MashaAllah, or this sister, or my brother, or my mother, or my wife, or my husband. MashaAllah, they, they are really, really helpful. I can rely on them uh, whenever I'm in need. And always they mention it. They always are thankful and grateful. Some people, we do something for them. They might say thank you one time, and they are grateful one time. But Imam says, يَسْتَكْثِرُ قَلِيلَ الْخَيْرِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ When somebody does something small for them, everywhere they go, they discuss it. Basically, it's something big for them. Because we have to keep in mind, we should not have expectation toward others. Some people, unfortunately, have expectation. Why didn't he do this? Why she didn't do this for me? And he or she, or he or she, my parents, my relatives, my co-worker, my brothers, my sisters, my husband, my wife, and so on and so forth. We have high expectation from people. It shouldn't be. So when we have high expectation and people do some small little things for us, we'll say, okay, I mean, they're supposed to do it for us. But when we bring our expectation to zero, when we don't expect anything from anyone, and I do mean it, if, when that becomes actually an action plan for us, 
wife from husband, husband from wife, parents from kids, kids from parents, brothers from sisters, and relatives and co-worker, everybody, we should not have expectation that, okay, he or she must do something for me. They're obliged to do this for me. Nobody is obliged to do anything for anyone. But we should do good to one another, but we should not have expectation from people that when our expectation is not met, we will be upset, we, will be, uh, we won't be happy. So when we have no expectation and people do something small for us, that will be very big. We will really appreciate it. We will be thankful and we will be grateful. And by us being thankful to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within our, with our actions. Because as we mentioned within the previous episode, saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, everything that happens to us, whatever makes us happy or upset, we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This is part of our action showing appreciation to others. And through that, we appreciate and we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it brings us to a discussion of being grateful and happiness. There are people who have all the means to be happy, but they are not grateful. Because some people claim that if you have everything that you want, you will be grateful. But we do see there are people who, are, who possess uh, all means of happiness, but still they are not grateful. Grateful, they are happy, there are people, they are grateful despite having anything, having or not having, possessing something or not possessing it. So there are people, we see them who have a lot of misfortune and are, and, and deeply they are happy and they are grateful. We see them, they do have a lot of motivational speakers and mashallah, a uh, good amount of them are out there. We can find their YouTube that they have, uh, they, are, they have faced a lot of misfortune within their lives, but they are grateful. Despite not having, for example, one of them, not, despite not having any of those uh, hands or hands or legs, only half part basically, he's a good motivational speaker. So it's not about having something to be happy and then happiness brings us, uh, make us grateful, no. There are people that are happy because they are grateful. It is not happiness that makes us grateful. Rather, it is gratefulness that makes us happy. Being happy, being content, being satisfied, being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, why? Because every moment is a gift. Every minute that we live, every inhale and exhale, our existence is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A gift that we have not worked for, a gift that we don't, we have not earned it, a gift that we don't deserve it. We haven't done anything toward for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deserves Him creating us. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Why Allah then created us? Except those, chapter 11, verse 119, except those on whom your Lord has mercy, and that is why He created them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to show, to show mercy to us. So he don't, he does, we, He's not obliged to create us. He created us to show us His mercy, that He is merciful. So every moment is a new gift that we have to be grateful. Every mo mo moment, every minute is a new opportunity that we have to take, even though if we fail, we're doing something, well, we have the next minute. We should be thankful that Alhamdulillah, He blessed us to be able to continue and continue and not being unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one thing that we must do for us to become more grateful, for us to be truly and genuinely when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, for that thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for that gratefulness to come from all of our uh, body parts and our hearts, and each cell of our body should be grateful. We need to do, this will be our action plan. Stop. We shouldn't rush through life. Some people, they are really rushing through the life and they just work and home and paycheck and bills and they have occupied themselves so much that they don't sit and relax and think of all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them. So stop. Look, see all the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon you and start counting them. We mentioned that. We mentioned it in a previous episode 
we will remind ourselves that we should not rush through life. We should stop, pause, think of all the great blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us, which we don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. We haven't worked for it. It's all based on His Rahmaniya and Rahimiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Him all beneficent, all merciful. It's because of His mercy that we have all of these blessings. So when we stop and when we look and we observe, we will be more thankful. We will be more grateful. We will appreciate everything that we have and we will start building our future on whatever we have. Unfortunately, we get so much occupied with what we are doing that we don't think that we have so much within our, we have so much in our plates that we can do more. Our capabilities and our potentials are really, really high. But we get so much trapped in small little things and we get busy of who said what, somebody's agree with me, somebody disagree with me, trying to satisfying people, trying to do this and this. No, stop, pause, look what you have, all the potentials that you have that you can grow and then you can enhance yourself. Where Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib salam says, أَتَزْعَمُ أَنَّكَ جَرْمٌ صَغِيرٌ وَفِيكَ انْطَوَ الْعَالَمُ الْأَكْبَرُ You think your small germ, your small little germ that doesn't have any benefit, not knowing that the whole universe has embedded in you? That shows our potential. That shows what we can get, how much we can go high. Basically, the sky is the limit. So, gratefulness and being thankful, it's not only verbally, it's a way of life that we see everything as an opportunity. We see everything as thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given us, what He has given us. So that becomes part of the action plans and understanding of us of this uh, verse, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, of basically keep reminding ourselves that He is blessing us every second, every moment is a new opportunity that we have to be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdu, we talked about hamd, thankfulness, gratefulness, being appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabb. Rabb is the one who owns something and owner of something, Rabbul Bayt, Rabbul Ibl, basically the owner of the camel, the owner of the house, and also he's the master, he's the one who's nurturing and he is involved in our upbringing. For lack of a better term, he's our coach. That uh, he is bringing us and disciplining us and basically he's involved in every minute of our upbringing. This is called Rab or coach or master. So he is the true and genuine owner of everything. And everything is under his hand and under his supervision. And he has placed a process for everything to reach its perfection, to reach the highest level of completion. Everything from the animals, from the humans, from objects, everything has a process to reach. Uh, every element has a process and has steps that it can take to become uh, perfect. Some taqweeni, some are within it, and some tashri'i, basically by Allah. We are giving this opportunity, He has given us the intellect, internal uh, guidance and external guidance, the prophets and the imams, to guide us by us following them. And we have the elements and others that are taqweeni, part of their nature that are going toward completion. Rab, basically, huwa rabbu kulli shay. We read chapter 6, verse 164. Say, shall I seek a Lord other than Allah while He is the Lord of all things? Another place that we see the word Rabb, which will explain to us the definition, also from Quran, chapter 26, verse 24. The Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them. So we are thanking Allah who is the owner, who is the Malik, who is the owner and He is the one who is upbringing us and nurturing us. So we see a very, very close relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creation.
and contrary to other some some sects within the Islam that they say okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the universe created mankind and he basically let go of it he let them to move on no alhamdulillah Rab Rab is the one who coaches us and he takes us basically step by step toward uh, our uh, achieving higher level not like an artist not like an architect or a contracting an artist will draw a picture and he will basically sell it and it goes an architect or a contractor he will build a building and he would let it go no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created his creations in the best of manners in the best of ways and also he is involved through the process of upbringing them and elevating them and he shows them basically the path so the whole universe every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's under his hands reaching higher and higher and show, Allah showing them the potential that they have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim we mentioned we talked about it Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdu we talked praising Allah all praise so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabb al alamin basically all the worlds that we are discussing Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all praise belongs to Allah Lord of the worlds so the action plan will be from this episode that we are number one going to be more thankful less expectation from other people hence we will be more grateful to other people because of what they're doing and we don't have any expectation for them to for them uh, to do this for us so less, expe less expectation small little things that they do we will be really grateful toward them and by us thanking them also we are thanking the creator which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we become it becomes part of our life it becomes all of our body parts are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's basically becomes our way of life of being grateful to what he has created and what he has blessed us with ar-Rahman ar-Rahim inshallah will be in the next episode we will conclude our lecture and this session inshallah by reciting Dua for the hastening the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif which this dua is the most important dua that we should always remind ourselves and read it all the time asking Allah sincerely and genuinely to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين